Good morning, guys. I am Hannah from Succeed with Dyslexia, and today I'm exploring more about how one city in Northern England is putting excellent dyslexia support at the heart of a brand groundbreaking new scheme in education. I'm here with Roger Broadbent from the Dyslexia Institute UK to find out more. Morning, Hannah. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, cool. So I'm the director of the Manchester, sorry, the Dyslexia Institute UK. Uh, I've been working around dyslexia for years and years and years in all sorts of different roles, supporting students at university, etc. Um, and I'm involved in this really exciting project with the uh, dyslexia friendly uh, movement here in Greater Manchester. It's a project in conjunction with um, Greater Manchester and lots of different organisations, uh, pr primarily under the um, the mayoral office of Andy Burnham, who really understands the issues around dyslexia. And he was the guest speaker at last year's conference. So he, he understands the ramifications of undiagnosed, unsupported dyslexia for our communities. So what we're trying to do here in Greater Manchester is it's nothing groundbreaking, but it's it's what we're trying to do is, is put together a kind of blue sky uh, system of operation for educators and councils, because this has got to be a team approach when we're addressing dyslexia. It's not just one uh, magic wand's going to fix all the um, the woes of mankind and womankind overnight. But what we're trying to do is to make sure that we're not make we're not repeatedly making the same mistakes here in Greater Manchester, and then hopefully, if that's successful, in other communities around the UK, that we're not constantly making the same mistakes where we're letting kids down in education and adults who are, who are in education, so that they are falling through the, the cracks, they're falling through the net, and they are not fulfilling their true potential. And you know, I'm sure, Hannah, that you've seen it. Um, with the effective work that scanning pens do, etc., that if the interventions arrive in a timely fashion, in a well-constructed manner, then the effect on the individual, the dyslexic person, can be profound and they can really thrive in the educational world and they can go on and have different life outcomes than they might otherwise have. And that's what we want to achieve. Um, so in a nutshell, that, that was it. That's wonderful. Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit more about where the Dyslexia Friendly Education Project started off? Like whose brainchild was it? How long has it taken to come to fruition? So I've been trying to work around making Manchester a centre of excellence for dyslexia for years and years. Manchester's a challenged city. We have all sorts of, we're going through lots of changes in the city. You know, we're a post-industrial city. Before, we used to be a, a massive engineering community, manufacturing community. We're going through a lot of transition. It's a thrive. It's still a thriving, you know, metropolis, and we're and we're booming, but as in growth and what have you. But the jobs that are coming into the city now are different jobs that need a lot more skill and education, IT jobs, etc. So the um, kind of the generational um, transition that we are going through means that we need to support our dyslexic community far more effectively than we have been doing historically. So as a consequence of that, that was picked up on by something called the Violence Reduction Unit here in Greater Manchester, uh, an initiative that's running across the country um, that then brought together lots of key interested parties as to how we can better achieve a more successful outcome for our um, our young people, but the community as a whole, so that we don't have so many people who are um, who end up truanting, who end up getting in trouble, who but more more fundamentally, who don't achieve their true potential. Dyslexics, well supported, full of self esteem and self confidence, can go on and achieve huge things massive things for our community it's you know it's not by accident that 40 percent of the millionaires um, in the uk are dyslexic you know we are very creative very resilient we find solutions to problems that's kind of how our brains are wired we're made for this gig so we need to encourage our dyslexic element of the community as much as possible so that they can find the feet and move on positively 
So other other parties that are involved, obviously uh, GM education, uh, GM government, um, working closely with uh, Manchester College, Andrew Hume. There's some fantastic individuals, Becky Becker, you know, who who work tirelessly to try and achieve this this goal. You said about timeline. It's been a long time in the brewing. Yeah. The, hopefully, the pot will be ready for delivery at um, in the in the new uh, academic year, uh, moving into August September. Um, there's a lot to achieve between now and then, and even when we've put together our our strategy, our our formula for greater success in this area it's still going to take a lot of effort and it's still going to need a lot of people to switch on to the issues around dyslexia because historically we've not been doing it here in greater manchester we've not been doing it in greater london we've not been doing it in greater birmingham we've not been doing it across the country it's you know it's not without cause the reason that we have so many dyslexic uh, pupils who truant and that's across the country a very a, a, a huge the huge majority of kids that truant are dyslexic but why is that we need to ask ourselves how can we make education more accessible and support these individuals far more effectively than we've been doing in the past well, that's marvelous um, I believe that there is a control group of adults um, in your pilot scheme. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of this for older learners and people returning to education? Yeah, we, we, so we're in the early stages of the pilot, but what we wanted to try and do was to bring support, effective support to these individuals that they'd not experienced in the past. The problem that we've had um, is that that COVID has had a massive impact, not only on those individuals, and it's been an, an added burden for dyslexic students to be having all their lessons on Zoom, for example, their support on Zoom. It's it's an it's an unnatural um, uh, format. So that's been problematic because the extra workload that's been on their shoulders has been without that kind of personal support that they've been used to. So they found it difficult to engage for lots of reasons, but also the tutors, their, their, um, their lecturers, their um, study support workers, they've also found it really tough that all this support had to be booked in, timelined through Zoom, rather than being able to meet on a one-to-one -one on a regular basis and have that, you know, that, that kind of continuality. And it's also tired a lot of people out. Yeah. I think I think there's there's kind of a feeling across the country. I don't know about you, Hannah, but it's kind of we're all a bit zoomed out. A little, yes. Yeah, um, I know we, it's been effective in lots of ways. So for me, with regards to the, the conference that we're going to talk about in a short while, that's been a really effective development and evolution for me and what I, what I achieve, what I want to achieve with the the, the dyslexia conference. But I think for day to day learning experience. It's been really tough for students and those people who are trying to support and educate them. Definitely. Can you tell me a little bit more about the people that you're trying to help and support? I mean, what does this mean in terms of the school to prison pipeline and what does this mean for Manchester as a whole? Mm, good question. Um, <laughs> well, at the minute, it's in its seedling stage. And it will mean nothing unless those people in governance who are in charge of the purse strings seriously can take it on board, can evaluate the long term consequences of not implementing change for uh, dyslexia support and education and general support in the community. Or we just carry on as we've been going for the last generations, where we are tolerating this almost systematic neglect of a significant portion of the population. We've got to remember that dyslexia affects one in five of the population. It's 20% of the population. 
And by dyslexia, I include dyscalculia and dyslexia. Dyscalculia is 5% of the population. By us ignoring the significant extra requirements that are needed at the pertinent times for these individuals, we are, we are just brewing a really negative scenario for these people and therefore for our communities. I can't remember who said it, but there's somebody famous, I think it was Goethe or somebody, said that the strength of any society should be measured by its weakest link. I'm not saying that dyslexics are weak, but if we allow them to fail because we are not supporting getting involved at the right time, it's the community's weakness, not the individual. Absolutely, yes. You have a conference coming up with Dyslexia Institute UK, don't you? Yeah, Anna, I, I, I know I get really up on my high horse about it and I don't want to sound as though I'm preaching about it. And I'm sure you, like myself and like lots of us, mm -hmm. you know, your colleague Jack and lots of other people who are working in this area, we all want to see significant change. You know, it's not just the Dyslexia Institute UK, Dyslexia Scotland, the BDA, there are lots of organisations that are crying out for significant change in this subject area. Um, right, so going on to the, uh, the, the the International Virtual Dyslexia Conference, <laughs> the 9th and 10th of September. Um, it follows on from last year's really successful event um, where Andy Burnham was the opening speaker. We had uh, over 40 guest speakers from around the world. It's going to be a similar format, but it's, we're making it a lot more accessible this year. Um, last year was pretty much uh, on an app-based uh, format. This year is going to be, it doesn't matter if you're on desktop, laptop, smartphone, doesn't matter what format you're going to be on. And the big thing about it is you can dip into it and watch what you want to see when you want to watch it. So you don't have to take those two days off to, to cram in all those different presentations. You know, we've got world leading experts who are going to be presenting on a range of subjects such as the um, school gate to prison gate scenario. Um, we've got issues like, what's it like being dyslexic and in a relationship? Why is it more difficult? Why is it more problematic for dyslexics in relationships? Um, we've got things like, what's it like to, to, to live the experience of being a dyslexic person and having that prejudice and also being black and having to deal with that prejudice in life? So. We've got all sorts of speakers. We've got Neil Alexander Pass. We've got uh, Professor Jonathan Glazard. We've got we've got over thirty speakers already. Um, That's very exciting. Students get a, a super discount price. I think it's eleven pound seventy. The the, uh, the early bird tickets have all flown out. They they went, and we've now got the the normal price tickets, but it's only fifty quid. But you know it's not a lot of money and you get the CPD points so that your continual professional development points that you know these days professional professionals are obliged to accrue so many points per year um, and it's going to be a really fun interesting event and we've got lots of marvelous um, the, the latest up-to-date assistive tech and other service providers are going to be marketing their wares and their services at the conference. And delegates this time will be able to book in for one-to-one -one sessions with these providers. They can book in for uh, learning webinars so that they can um, get to see up front, but have it explained to them by somebody, or they can just go on the recorded webinars. But I want to try and get across to the, the delegates that there's fantastic support kit and services available that will make a real difference to the lives of dyslexic individuals if we start to use it en masse. No, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for chatting to us today, Roger. Thank you very much. Cheers, Anna. All the Have best. Have an amazing day. You Thank too. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video as much as we did putting it together. Now we have another unique and awesome piece of content coming up next. Please feel free to click this link here and learn more about Shaheem, who is a student at King's College of London. He's a dyslexic individual and speaks about some of the challenges and some of the things that he undergoes being a student at university having dyslexia. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll see you there.